interact. This is the institutional software and uh, in the password. Password is available um, on Blackboard. Update later. Um, I will also make it unlisted um, so that other people will have no access to it. What you're going to do is uh, you need to go to um, so we are going to first thing first, okay, we are going to do a beta calculation. So following capital asset pricing model, right, how can we analyze in, uh, this fund? Okay. You can do it multiple ways. Okay. So this is a ticker, right? I I use it for several years and I just remember that's the ticker name, okay? So in capital asset pricing model, right, if you just uh, uh, search Capan, so um, we, we need to find out the beta, right, that's, and then maybe risk free rate and alpha, you know, that's the only thing you need. So how can you do it, right? Um, first of all, you can double click on it, just like what I showed you, this would be a quick take. Uh, what it looks like, right? It kind of tell you a lot of information already. We we'll know this is a small value, right? This is a style box. Um, you need to have a good idea about the style box. What is that? So company, they have large companies, they have media companies, they have small companies, right? It's pretty straightforward, okay? And then they have uh, gross companies, right? Blend, and then value companies. I think the size is fairly easy to understand, right? large, a medium, and a small. Uh, wh what are the value? Okay, value companies are um, those, they invest in like utilities, they invest in, um, they invest in something you know, right, Duke Energy. Um, so basically those companies, they have, a, they have a low P ratio, price divided by earning, okay. So low PE ratio means you know how much they make and investors just pay uh, not that much for it. So uh, that's value company, right? Growth company would be easy to understand. What are growth company? They have high PE ratios. Who are they? Right? What kind of companies are they? Uh, they are a lot of time technology companies. Uh, why they have high PE ratio? Uh, because a lot of technology companies, those days, if you think about Facebook, right, when they originally started, they don't make any earnings, okay? They don't make any money, but people are willing to pay a lot of price, right? High price for relatively low earnings because they think in the future they will make make more money, right? It's just about all about market share. As soon as they get into your cell phone, uh, those companies can make money in the future. So that's why those companies have high P ratio. We call them gross companies. Certainly, this fund is a small value fund. Uh, which means they don't invest in technology companies, they invest in utilities, small utility companies. Okay, so that's what's going on here. And then uh, we, we talk a, a briefly about it, right? And then we can look at the style allocation. So those are their allocations. Okay. Um, so we will have some um, the region holding total return. Let me see whether they have um, beta directly uh, report here. You see not, uh, when they look at return, but th this is a really good chart, right? It shows you how you analyze something, okay? It's all relative, okay? So when you look at uh, investment portfolio's return or performance, it's all relative, right? In 2009, they have 32.5% return. That's high, right? And then if you look at those, it seems they have positive returns. However, if you compare them, if you compare them to what is Russell 2000 value, uh, those are uh, in Russell index. They they pick 2000 value companies. Okay, is that making sense? Because they found investing value value companies, small value companies, right? So you simply look at uh, Russell 2000 2000 small value companies. Okay. Russell 2000 means relatively small uh, or to medium uh, value firms. And then those are their returns, okay? So you compare to them, and then they plot it here, right? Russell, that will be the 
the green line. It seems the green line is doing better than this one, especially after 2016. Okay. Then you also look at I think this is where President Trump get elected. Um, then you can look at uh, the category, right? This is a small value fund. Morningstar has its own own category of small value fund. So the category performance, uh, those category will be in uh, the orange line, right? It seems this fund does really lack orange line performance. Is that making sense? So let's look at rate of rating and return. So those are Morningstar's ratings. Um, they do report beta here. Okay, finally get it. Uh, so they do. Uh, they, they have two ways to calculate beta. One is the best fit index, one is standard index. So, um, so the best fit index is Morningstar U.S. Small Value Total Return U.S. Dollar. Um, the standard index is uh, S&P 500. Okay. So, uh, so this is R square. So they basically did a regression analysis and find out this is the R square. And then this is a beta, right? We can see the beta is 0 0.68 when you compare to the small value found. However, the beta is um, 1.21 when it is uh, 0 0.88 when it's compared with S&P 500. Um, then uh, they also uh, they also analyze the category, right? Small value found category overall. What is their beta? Their beta is 1.21. So what does that mean? Okay, that means uh, this fund, we all know that beta measures the market risk, right? This fund has 0 0.88, uh, it means uh, they have lower risk, lower market risk compared with the category. The category has 1.21, so this fund is really conservative, so basically that's what it says. And if you compare it with the small value overall, it also shows that this fund has a lower risk compared with the uh, small value category overall. And then, uh, if you can, if you consider their risk compared with uh, Morningstar uh, Small Value Fund, then they have alpha of 0 0.171. So basically, they generate positive alpha. Okay, if you compare them with uh, Small Value category, after you consider their risk, however, they have negative alpha if you compare them to S&P 500. Not only this fund, the overall uh, category has negative alpha. Okay. And then we can see that the beta alpha calculation can be multiple different years, right? This is five year, this is ten year, this is fifteen year. It seems they have all negative alphas. Um, we all know negative alpha is not good, right? So just give you guys some idea. So this is this is what they calculated for you, right? So how can we calculate it by ourselves? Um, let me just show you how can we calculate it by ourselves. So this one index we add it, right? Let's just add another you know, uh, S and P five hundred. Um, let me double click and go back to see what what, what is that. Um, investor return or Over here, okay, let's look at SP 500 TRU dollar. Okay, so let's just uh, search this. So, this is an index, okay, it's not a fund, that's why um, I was not really uh, aware of it. So, what we need is a return, okay, we go to uh, we remove all data points here, we go to um, historical data, price and return data. Let's just do mostly uh, gross return, let's do mostly net return, okay. So this is um, after fees. Okay. Um, this is three year, right? Um, so we can just look at three years. It's fine. So this is a three year analysis. Okay. So this is what's, what it looks like. Uh, all those are um, monthly returns. Okay. The first thing first, right? We need to uh, export it uh, to Excel. This is Excel. Um, we assume risk free rate here is zero, okay. Let's just make it um make it easier to calculate. Okay? You can always um get a risk free rate. Um, and let me go back and try to get a risk free rate, right? Uh, so when you look at um when you look at 
What if I actually have something for you? Okay, um, beta, let's just search beta. So, um, if you add a beta to this, it will tell you, right, um, in the beta calculations, uh, what is the risk-free proxy? Okay, do you guys see this? Um, they, so they use US Treasury, Treasury bill auction average three months, right? Let's just um, remember this, and then uh, Treasury bill three months, right? See whether we can add it. So this is a proxy they use, right? This is the auction treasury three months um, short term. Uh, we can consider this to be a risk-free rate. Okay. So let's just do it right now, um, in case you have some confusion. So this is the data we um, exported, right? So this is uh, um, original data. Monista, right? So this is Monista, original, uh, original data, Monista. Um, and then we need to uh, we need to change it a little bit. First of all, let's copy and paste everything, okay? I just copied it, okay, you can just paste special, uh, transpose it, so this is the way you, um, this is the way you transpose it, okay. So we don't want to have um, all those, right, so what we do is uh, we always, we will replace it with empty, okay, replace all, you can see it, and then we, we don't want any US dollars here. Just select this USB replace all. So this is how you uh, this is how you clean your data. Is that making sense? So we transpose it. So we have a we have a long table right now. Okay. So this is a this is a table. This is a format that most people uh, feel uh, comfortable working with, right? So let's analyze Queen's Rotor file, right? Um, so first, right. Uh, first it will be uh, QRSVX or the Quizor or minus risk free rate, right? So this is the uh, risk premium of Quizor farm. So th this will be equal to this minus the risk free rate, right? So we're gonna do it uh, for all three years. And then we let's let's look at compare, right? The first will be capital asset pricing model here, okay? And then we use the market risk premium, right? So again we use. Uh, we use S&P 500 as the market proxy, okay? That will be equal to this, minus risk free rate, okay? So with that, right, you can do um, capture asset pricing model calculation, okay? Um, how can you do it? You can just go to data, um, data analysis, and then you can do a uh, regression analysis. Uh, this is your Y, okay, and then uh, this is your X. This is a regression analysis, okay, nothing um, complicated. Includes label, and then let's just output, right? So this is your Capen. Okay. This is your Capen calculation. Um, this is your alpha, this is your beta, right? So this, this is our calculation. Um, let's compare that with uh, So we can see here, right, so when they use three year, uh, they use um, They use three year and then they compare with S&P 500, their beta is 0 0.88 So let's look at our beta Probably like 0 0.88, um, their alpha is uh, negative um, 7.75. Our alpha is different, okay? So what does that mean? That means they calculated wrong, okay? This data point is wrong. I'm, I'm very confident, okay? I'm a PhD safely, right? I'm very sure Morista uh, forget to update this. That's why when you, um, when you look at it, uh, you need to uh, be critical, okay? Don't trust everything they have, you always go back and do your own analysis. 
So that's uh, what, that's capital asset pricing model, right? So that's what we just covered. And also you can you can use uh, category, right? This this index category average, right? Minus mean square, right? So again, this is uh, if you understand truly what's going on, okay, uh, you will be able to um, to do a lot of a lot of things. Okay, you need to go see through it. Okay, so Monistar says um, because w this is the founder, right? Our goal is to look at its performance. How do we how do we compare it to? Uh, we can compare it to S and P five hundred, which is uh, our index, right? Or we can compare to all small value funds in the in the United States. Monistar has a category. What Monistar did is they put all the small value funds together, and then they calculate their return, and then they 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 average them or they value weight it with them. Right? If you have uh, so th this is evaluated. Uh, most of the index are evaluated. Okay. So what does that mean? So if, if we have uh, three funds, right? If we have one, two, three funds, right? This fund is hundred dollars, is twenty dollars, is thirty dollars. Right? Those are our money. Like how much money do we have, right? In those funds, probably hundred million, twenty million, thirty million. If this fund, is so let, let me just finish, it, right? Three percent, two percent, and then five percent, right? If you just simply average it up, right? Average of those returns, you are going to get a 3% return, okay, if you make it 3.33%, um, right? So this is a simple average, uh, this is called equal weight, this is called equal weight. However, we do have something called value weight, okay? What, what is the value weight? Um, so for founder one, they have 3% return. However, because you have $100 in it, right, certainly this should be weighted more if you consider money. So that's what we value weight means, okay? So you need to just simply sum if we have only three funds in, uh, in, in the US. In total, we have $150 million in those funds, right? And then for this, you have uh, what is the percentage in the first fund? And then you can just use this times the weight, okay? And then you can just sum them. So this is value weight. Okay, so this is this is a value way to return. If you make a percentage. So they are different, right? Did you guys see it? So so that's what equal weight and value weight means. Um this is a value weighted uh, index for all US small value farm. And then this is our ca calculation, right? And then you can do another regression analysis. Um, so our Y stays the same, right? We just change our X. And then you click OK. So this would be a category, right? Still, uh, this is following the idea of Capel, okay? That's why capital asset pricing model is so important. We do not do anything new, we just make some improvements on their model. So this is what it looks like, okay? If we compare to Monistar's data, This three year, right, compared with the average, and then the beta is um, 0.68, the alpha is uh, 0.71. So again, the same they have beta calculated right, the alpha calculation is wrong, and then look at their R square. R square is also uh, fairly accurate, okay. Um, and this is R square, yeah. So basically, get everything here, right? The alpha is just off uh, for some reason. So maybe you can email Monistar and tell them they did something wrong. Okay. So that's uh, that's something um, I want to cover today. Um, certainly, you can look at um, there's another thing called a three-factor analysis, right? Uh, let me just do it here again. Um, so we, we did two uh, regression analysis, right? Already, and you can always do a regression analysis using. Uh, something called a three factor. Okay. Uh, you need to go to um uh pharma uh, French library. Okay. So those are two professors, finance professors, they, they developed a model. Okay. You can come here and then just download this factor. Okay. And then I um 
I download it here. Uh, so we need uh, everything from 2006, 2016, right? 2016 uh, September. So we will co uh, copy everything here. Then we need to um, we'll come back, right? Come back to this and then copy those. So this is their three factor. Okay, they uh, they created their own factor. So if you are interested, you can certainly look into it. So uh, how can you do this analysis now? Uh, would be um, you you simply regress this. Okay, against all those. Factors one, two, three factors. This is the risk free rate. Now, given that we use a different risk free rate, we'll just delete it. Okay. Um, so, what you do is you go to um, data and then you go to data analysis, regression analysis. We choose uh, y the same, right? However, our x is uh, different. We're going to have this as an x. We need to change our y. It seems they don't have uh, data for um, August of 2019, so we need to also make this. We only select up to um, up to um, July of 2019. Okay, um, and then everything is good, right? So uh, this is three factor. So this is three factor analysis. Okay, so this is what it looks like, and then this is alpha. And this is the market. Uh, this is size, right? Uh, th those are called loadings. Um, it's really important, okay, you know how to do it. Um, I will ask you guys to do this in my class and also um, if you take CFA exams or FRM exams, uh, they will, I remember clearly like FRM level 2, they tell you, they ask you, how do they construct it, right? How, what's going on here? If you know how to do those, you know how to do them, okay? Many people don't know how to do those, okay? They just know. Um, they just know the book how how it reads. They never have any practice or demonstration. Okay, so um, I will just save this and upload it to um, Blackboard. Um, um, download is called um, Data Copan. That's all I have for today. Uh, thank you all. Um, and let me know if you have.